Yes, you are making the right decision by instead of looking up Tofino, you're now interested in Euclulet. Now let me tell you, Euclulet is one of my favorite places in the world, which is why I'm here to give you the full guide to Euclulet, which starts right here at the end of Highway 4. So instead of turning right to Tofino, let's turn left to Euclulet. So first, my name is Michael, I'm a travel vlogger and my goal on this channel is to show you the incredible people, places and things that make our world amazing, which is why we're in Euclid today. So your first stop is going to be here at the Pacific Rim National Park Reserve of Canada Visitor Center. This is where you're going to find your maps, your guides, and plan your trip. But it's also where you're going to pay for your National Park Entry Pass. You'll find this yellow machine that looks like a parking meter. You'll select how many people are in the car and how many days you need it for, and voila, you've got your pass. Now also here, if you drove an electric vehicle, they have an EV charging station. So plug in, get charged up for your stay here, and now you're ready to enjoy your journey. So let's start here and work our way through town. Euclid is on a peninsula, ocean on one side and an inlet on the other side. So the main road is called Peninsula Road, funnily enough. Now the first thing you'll see on your way into town on your right hand side is the Long Beach Surf Shop, followed by the Petro Canada gas station. So if you see those, you know you're on the right spot. Now on your left hand side, you've reached the old Welcome to You Clueless sign. It's a really impressive carving in itself. I mean, look at the eagle on top. That was carved. Anyway, across the street from that is the Relic Surf Shop. Not only do they rent and sell surf gear here, but also clothing and they have their own apparel as well. So remember to shop locally. Now, next door is one of the most surprising restaurants in town because in the back, it has a vintage bowling alley. It has been here for decades and has been recently restored to its former glory, but it's so old it doesn't even have electronic scorekeeping, so it's all up to you. Also, look at this. It houses a surprisingly large arcade with air hockey, games, pool, pinball, and even a love meter if you dare. As we move further into town, you'll come across Image West, which is a nice and interesting souvenir slash apparel shop, you know, in case you forgot to bring a sweater and the weather is cooler than expected, uh, but really nice, worth checking out. Now, across the street is a new development with general businesses like real estate and insurance, but also this is where you'll find the yoga studio if you need a little bit of exercise or stretching. And if you want even more peace and quiet, right across the street is the marina, which is such a nice spot. Ah, <sighs> Yeah, I, I like it here. Now you won't see any whales here, but look over to your right and you'll see this fantastic mural. Speaking of art, let's head back up to Peninsula Road where you'll find these. And if you've spotted this square full of art and picnic tables, then you found the Raven Lady food truck known for its oysters. So keep your eyes peeled for this. Next up, we have Pina Art and Clothing. A local artist makes awesome West Coast themed art here and you can have it printed onto any piece of clothing. Bring your own clothes or buy a shirt or sweatshirt from them, but choose from a large selection of prints from animals to nature to hilarious characters and have it printed right then and there onto almost anything, even pillows. Next door is the famous Wreckage. You'll spot it by looking for the blue boat parked right out front. Now this old building is unique in itself, and while it's currently selling cute home decor, it's worth coming in just to see the floor itself. Literally, it's made out of pieces of sliced tree stumps mixed with stones and cement, and anyway, this place is super cute and it's a very interesting little place. Now, as we go past Murray's Grocery, it's essentially a convenience store that's open late, we'll come up to a number of restaurants, including the new Pluvio, the cute, oh, look at this cute little place called the Heartwood Kitchen. We have Saki Sushi, if you're feeling that. There's also the all day breakfast and great patio of the Blue Room Bistro. And just across the street is the Cedar Grill, which is in Davison's Plaza. Inside the plaza is a number of necessary services, such as the post office, jungle suds laundromat, waves and shaves hair salon, an art gallery, and of course, the always necessary Barclay Cafe. So now we've reached the heart of town, the co-op, probably the least exciting place, but possibly the most important. 
The co-op has everything you need from a grocery store, deli, butcher shop, produce, everything you expect out of a grocery store, but also everything from rubber boots, camping equipment, plumbing, electrical, fishing, seasonal and camping gear, kayaks, even bicycles. So if you've forgotten anything on your trip, come here, they've got it. Now, this is the main square overlooking the inlet, and on the left-hand side is this old church, which has just been renovated into a brew pub that's opening this summer. And in the back corner, up on the deck there, is a really small and cute little coffee shop called the Foggy Bean Coffee Company. And what's really interesting about them is they actually roast their own beans here in town in Euclid. So this is a must-see if you want to come for a delicious and quiet cup of coffee. A couple other little shops in the area. Across the street is the West Coasters Reuse It, essentially a little thrift shop in case you're looking for anything, followed by the BC Liquor Store and a CIBC, you know, for your essentials. Across the street from there is another little thrift shop, and at the bottom of the hill near the water is the old Euclid General Store, which is now the Crow's Nest. And right next to that is this new development, and right next to that is the Euclid Aquarium. But we'll get back to that in a second. We're gonna continue on past it out onto the dock. You can actually drive your car out here. You can sit with a coffee. You can take pictures of your car or relax or just take in the atmosphere. Sometimes there's sea lions. It, it's kind of one of my favorite spots as well. Okay, so now the aquarium. The Euclid Aquarium is actually Canada's first catch and release aquarium, which means all of these living creatures in here have been caught, they stay in the aquarium for a little bit, and then they all get released back into the ocean so they won't spend the rest of their life here in this aquarium. Also, what's really fantastic for kids and for adults is they have a lot of these touch pools where you're able to reach in and touch anything that would sort of be in the tidal zone, if you will. Here's a little insider's tip. At the back of the aquarium, right on the entrance to the pier, there are actually public washrooms. So if you're wandering around town and need to use a washroom, there you go. All right, continuing on. Across the street from there, we have the municipal offices, essentially City Hall. Nothing really to see or do in here. Next to that, but still on the water, is Jamie's Whaling Station. From here, you can go on whale watching tours. Next to it is a kayaking place, so if you want to get out onto the water and explore, this is your place. Moving along, Zoe's Bakery and Cafe. Again, really good coffee in here and lots of delicious, freshly baked items. And what I really like here, it's very much a small town feel, but they have a leave a cup, take a cup. So if you have an old reusable cup that you want to leave for someone else, can use that here. I thought that was so cool. Now, across the street, we have Frankie's Resto Bar, and it's right next to Yuki Dogs. Nice little patio out front. It is sort of specialty hot dogs. Anything if you want a chili covered dog, a mac and cheese covered dog. Just really interesting fun food is in here. Now, right behind there in this ominous black building is Yuki Bikes. It's actually really nice and white and fresh in here. You can buy bicycles, but also rent them. Now, of course, Euclid has a fire department, a high school, and an elementary school, but we're gonna move on to the Wild Pacific Trail, and specifically the Lighthouse Loop. So it's a really nice short two and a half kilometer loop. You'll start inside lush, green, west coast, temperate rainforest that's just beautiful. It has skunk cabbage and really twisted trees that are caused by the storms slamming into the west coast that make it all so interesting to see. Now the point of this walk and where you'll probably end up taking the most of your photos is here at the end at the Amphitrite Lighthouse. It's also a great place to run ahead and scare your friend. Boo! Man, look at that water. Beautiful. And in case you need it, keep your eyes peeled at the beginning of the trails because sometimes there are walking sticks for you to use hung on the back of some of the signposts. But just make sure you return them when you're done with them. They're for everybody, we have to share. Okay, now you've worked up an appetite, you have to try Jiggers Fish and Chips. This is a food truck, it's not here every day. So if it's not there when you drive past, pull in, check the sign to see when they'll be there next because you must try these delicious, fresh, fresh fish and chips. So good. Okay, so now you're full, we're gonna go for another walk. The Rainforest Trail, this is actually in the Pacific Rim National Park. It's a little boardwalk that walks through old growth forest. Look at Riley here. Oh, he loves it. 
And while you're out and about, make sure to check out the beaches. That's what this area is known for. The closest beach to Uclulet is Wiccaninish Beach. There's also Incinerator Rock or the well-loved Chesterman Beach, but I'll leave that up to you. Now, in terms of accommodation, I'll let you decide where you want to stay, whether it's Airbnb, a motel, a hotel, or this is the Black Rock Lodge. Even if you don't stay here, it's pretty neat to come in, even just for a drink, and check out the lounge because they have this awesome bar that's made out of blue tile to look like a wave. So this is called the Float Lounge, and it's just a nice spot to relax, have a drink, and enjoy the sunset. And that is you clue it from front to back. If I missed anything or you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. You can subscribe by clicking on my face right here. I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. See ya.